So today I want to talk to you about a clip from Jonathan Carl's interview with former Vice President Dick Cheney, in which Cheney said this. Uh, I like uh, uh, Governor Palin. Um, uh, I've met her, I know her. Um, she's an attractive candidate, but based on her background, she'd only been governor for about two years. Um, I don't think she passed that test. Of being think, ready. Of being ready to take over. And um, I think that was a, a mistake. Now that caused quite a stir in conservative and liberal circles. And, well, I have some things. I, I think Britt Hume pretty well summed up how I feel about this. I think Cheney, in a sense, he's right, but I think what happened is that, that Sarah Palin actually helped McCain a lot, as it, was, as it was suggested in the previous panel. She gave him a terrifically, uh, uh, she helped McCain, like, gave him a great convention. She was a huge hit at the convention. Uh, her speech was a big hit. She did well in the debate against Biden. She kind of held her own. Now, later in the campaign, uh, the press got on her. She got character assassinated, and people ended up at the end of the campaign think, not thinking very well of her. But there's no chance, in my opinion, after September 15th, when the market melted down, that McCain was going to win the election, and blaming any of it on Sarah Palin, I think, is faulty. But I do want to address something specific in his remarks. And that was his comment that... Based on her background, she'd only been governor for about two years. Um, I don't think she passed that test. So, two years. She had been governor of Alaska for two years. Now, as I pointed out four years ago, roughly four years ago, after John McCain announced his choice of Sarah Palin as his running mate, if you go back just over a century, in the last 110 years, then three governors were elected vice president of the United States less than two years into their respective first terms as governor. Teddy Roosevelt, Calvin Coolidge, and Spiro Agnew. Notice that two of those men ended up becoming president. And I think we can all agree, they turned out to be pretty good presidents. Now, alas, Spiro Agnew did not meet with such success. True, he was re-elected vice president, but less than a year into his second term, he resigned in disgrace. However, it's worth pointing out that Woodrow Wilson was elected president after less than two years as governor of New Jersey. But let's talk about these three guys, Roosevelt, Coolidge, and Agnew. Of the three, I think Palin has the most in common with Teddy Roosevelt. If you think about it, both of them got their start in politics at the local level. Teddy Roosevelt was elected to the state assembly, Palin was elected to the city council. We obviously know Governor Palin is an avid huntress, and Teddy Roosevelt, a skilled hunter as well. In fact, after he left the state assembly, T.R. spent the next two years hunting and ranching in the Dakota Territory. Later, he became the New York City Police Commissioner, overseeing one of the largest police forces in the country. Sarah Palin was Alaska Oil and Gas Commissioner, Oil and Gas Commissioner for one of the largest energy producers in the United States. They both angered the entrenched, I guess you could say, establishment leaders of their own party in their respective home states. They both had an independent streak that did not sit well with the Republican Party leaders at the time. Roosevelt, when he was governor of New York, supported a bill that levied a huge tax on corporations in the state. Palin signed a bill into law that levied a large oil tax that didn't make her very popular with the 
establishment Republicans in the state, but they both were good, effective leaders. And certainly the people of Alaska appreciated what Palin did. Her approval ratings as governor were sky high, and neither of them exactly won the immediate approval of the national party either. We have heard extensively about the Republican gripes about Palin and, of course, the very petulant, in my opinion, after the fact, grumbling about her from former McCain campaign staffers and other so-called Republicans. When President McKinley died after being shot by an anarchist in 1901, and they knew that Roosevelt was going to become president, the Republican national chairman at the time, a guy named Mark Hanna, supposedly remarked, good lord, that damned cowboy is president now. We know about the vicious attacks on Sarah Palin and her family, and of course there were the milder attacks on her, the cartoonists who lampooned her. Let's not forget they did that to TR as well. A lot of people did not take Teddy Roosevelt seriously until well into his presidency. Now, we'll probably never know what kind of a vice president Sarah Palin would make, and you know, she'll probably never be president, so we won't know about that either. But I just thought it was interesting the way the former vice president chose to phrase his remarks. Certainly, um, whether or not Sarah Palin was experienced enough to become president is an issue that you're not going to get everybody to agree on, but I think it's beyond the scope of reasonable disagreement that Barack Obama was not qualified to be President of the United States when he ran in 2008, and the country is paying for the consequence of electing him. Anywho, that's how I feel. Please, I'd like to know how you feel. Comment below, post a video response. Do check out my blog. There it is. There's a link to it, I think, in the video description on this page. And also follow me on Twitter, at Right Wing Genius. Well, thanks for watching. Good night, and don't mess with the Right Wing Genius.